Hi, we're going to discuss plasmid mapping. Plasmid mapping, uh, otherwise known as restriction mapping, is where we are going to essentially try to map the location on a circular piece of DNA, otherwise known as a plasmid. We want to map the location at which restriction enzymes are going to snip or cut that plasmid. Uh, you may notice I kind of battle, I'm battling something here. I got a little funky voice going, but we got to kick this puppy out to give you this content. So recall that a, pl uh, a restriction enzyme is just a protein that's going to separate the DNA molecule at a very specific location. So think of them as, a, as the molecular scissors. Uh, they're going to cut or digest or restrict um, in a particular location. So whenever a DNA molecule is cut with a restriction enzyme, the resulting pieces often need to be reassembled into a map that can represent the relative locus of where the restriction enzyme cut the DNA molecule. Usually scientists are trying to determine where a specific gene is located in a certain piece of DNA. So they start by using restriction enzymes that act close to either end of whatever gene of interest is, like we did in our simulation. So once the gene has been located on a piece of DNA, it's useful to determine where the piece of DNA was originally located. And to do this, scientists can construct a map of the original original piece. And remember that plasmids are rings of circular pieces of DNA. Because plasmids are rings of circular DNA, a restriction enzyme that cuts a plasmid once results in a linear piece of DNA that has the same total number of bases as the original circle. So if we take a look at the plasmid on the right, if we cut it once with restriction enzyme Y, the linear piece is still going to be 1,000 base pairs long. When you use two restriction enzymes or the same restriction enzyme is going to cut two places, you're going to end up with having two separate segments. In this example here with restriction enzyme X, you're going to be left with a 300 base pair fragment and a 700 base pair fragment because the ring is cut in two different places. So let's take a look at a sample problem. Uh, first of all, we're given some data here in a table form. Let's talk about the first little uh, set of data here. Um, these each represent a restriction enzyme. The first one is called ECO-R1 and the second is called HIND3, sometimes pronounced HIND3. Um, either way, we really don't have to worry about those too much. You'll recognize those as being restriction enzymes. They'll be, it be told to you that there's some restriction enzyme. There's a whole handful of these that become pretty common. Um, really what they're, they're named for, you know, the first few letters are named usually in the organism that they were discovered in, and then they're just kind of numbered after that. The numbers here represent the number of base pairs. So as we just said, when when you have a circular plasmid, um, remember a plasmid by definition is a, is a circular form or a ring of DNA. So you can measure it in the number of base pairs. The second thing here, I guess I'm not done here with this first table. When the plasmid DNA, when the particular sample of DNA is treated with or exposed to this restriction enzyme, Eco R1, it results in three total linear fragments. Therefore, Eco R1 must cut in multiple places. Now, here in the HIND3, there is only one fragment that is 50 base pairs. When we apply both of the restriction enzymes to the same sample of DNA, we end up with these four individual segments. So, we can start by, the logical one to start with is the HIND3, because that tells us something. So the first thing you need to do is draw a circle. A circle is going to represent kind of a clock face, and we make our first mark right at 12 o'clock. And that 12 o'clock is going to represent where the HIND3 cuts. And we know that the entire thing is 50 base pairs. 
because of this data. Now, going on here, um, if this is, if this at 12 o'clock represents 50 base pairs, then at 6 o'clock, this must represent 25. And at 3 o'clock, this must represent half of 25. So we're looking at 12 to 13 base pairs. At 9 o'clock, this represents about 37 to 38 base pairs, and so on. So you can then kind of cut this thing up, thinking of it as a clock face, proportional to the whole. So moving forward, just kind of downscale my first plasma there, um, another strategy is to make a second circle for your second plasmid, for your second restriction enzyme. Now, really what these should be is they should be exactly the same size, but for explanation purposes, I'm just going to obviously make this a little bit bigger. But you do the same thing with the other one. So the Eco R1, I'm going to go to 12 o'clock, and that's going to represent my first Eco R1 cut. Now, I need this to represent the Eco R1. I need to show that there's a 30 base pair, a 15 base pair, and a 5 base pair. So remember that right about 6 o'clock would be 25 base pairs. So we need to go to about 7 o'clock. And this is going to represent the first space there is going to represent the 30 base pairs of the first cut. So that leaves us with 20 base pairs from this cut to our original. And we have to fit in the last two bits of data to make sure that it fits there. So we're going to go probably up to about 11 o'clock. And this should account for our 5 and our 15. So again, it's getting a little bit messy here. But I've got three cuts right here resulting in a 30 base pair unit plus 15 base pair plus 5, and we're back to our 50 base pair for the total. Now the trick is to kind of put them together. It's obviously tough to do on, on uh, in a two-dimensional surface. It really helps if we have a three-dimensional plasmid um, model, but we need to make them fit somehow. And the trick is, is that they have to fit this last bit of data. So when you apply the two restriction enzymes together, you're going, to have a, you're going to have a map that shows us a 20, a 15, a 10, and a 5 segment. Now there's some important data here that, remember, our, our Eco R1 leaves us with a 5 and a 15. Well, both of those segments, 5 and 15, are in both the single Eco R1 and the combined restriction enzyme fragment. So therefore, that leaves us, we need to find a 20 and a 10. Well, that has to happen inside the big cut. So instead of, instead of having any cuts out here, we know that there has to be an additional cut so that we have a 20 and a 10 fragment left. And there, therefore, the, we know that this hen cut, the original cut that we did the first time, this has to occur somewhere in this fragment because there are no 30 base pair fragments in the combination of the restriction enzymes. So there's a couple different ways to do this, but I'm going to go right about here, and I'm going to put our hind cut there. That's going to leave us with a 20 base pair segment, and this one will be a 10 base pair segment. Now... Either way, I could put this one somewhere up here around the uh, around maybe the one o'clock, two o'clock region there. Either one, it really isn't going to matter as long as we are ending with a map that is going to account for all of the data. It's a very important key to remember that these plasma maps give relative positions. For more accuracy, you would actually have to run uh, additional digests. So here's another sample problem done exactly like we've done the first. 
Remember that uh, we were given three bits of information. We're given the BAM H1 and the ECO R1 restriction enzyme data, as well as the combined data. So again, here's our gel that was run in the well with the DNA only exposed to the ECO R1 restriction enzyme. We get a one fragment that's 40 base pairs long. The BAM H1 results in three fragments, one of them 24 base pairs, one of them 12 base pairs, and one of them four base pairs. A review, the smaller fragments traveled further through the gel in the same amount of time. And then when we combine the two, the ECO R1 and the BAM H1, we have these four fragments. So again, we can start drawing circles and trying to fit the data. Remember, one strategy to do this is to draw two circles, each for their own individual restriction enzymes, and then try to get them to fit. You can pause right here, and we'll take a look at what you got. So remember, we're going to first draw a circle. And our first one, we're going to go with the one that creates the first or the one cut. We're going to put it at 12 o'clock. This one is our Eco R1. And we know that this is a 40 base pair plasmid. If I'm going to match it here, I'm going to go to the second one, which is the BAM. And we'll take a look at that data. Again, at 12 o'clock, we'll put the BAM H1. If this is, if this represents uh, 12 o'clock at 40 base pairs, at 6 o'clock, this would be 20 base pairs. And of course, then way over here at 9 o'clock would be 30. And way over here at 3 o'clock would be 10 base pairs. So from that, we can figure out what our first one is. Our, or sorry, our second cut, if our first cut is at 12, at 24 base units, base pairs, or map units, this would be our second cut. So this would be a 24 base pairs. Then we need to fit 12 and 4 into there. So about 4 back from 12 o'clock should be another... BAM H1 cut, and we should have a fragment that is 12, 4, and 24. I really hope that adds up to 40 base pairs. Our last trick is to figure out where this fits in. So the Eco R1 really has to fit in somewhere on this. Again, we have to account for this data when we combine the two. So we need to finish with a 16 base pair, 12 base pair, 8 base pair, and 4 base pair fragment. I forgot to mention that sometimes these restriction enzymes can actually cut in the exact same place. And that can be really tricky because they would obviously cut, uh, they, would, they would hide each other. But given this data, where do you think we should place this cut with the Eco R1 in order to give us our final data. The question, the first hint is, right now we have a fragment of 24 base pairs. Does that show up in the final data? So again, our longest fragment is 24, but we don't have a 24 base pair fragment on our map. So we still, we have already have a 4, we already have a 12, so we need to account for a 16 and an 8. So where is our eco going to be? It's either going to be down here where we have a 16 and an 8 base pair, or it's going to happen up here where we have the 8 first and then the 16. It's important to realize that these plasmid maps give relative positions, there are often multiple answers that are acceptable. Either of our, either of our restriction sites 
there would be acceptable. Here's our third sample. This one you can go ahead and pause the video here and I'll give you a chance to give me your answers in class. Have a piece of paper out and, and you'll be able to do this on your own.